everyone, welcome to the Fly King Fisher Winning Post. I'm your host Mohit Lalvani and as always there's plenty on the show today. 2011 is coming to a close so we took a chance to take a look at the year that went by. The year 2011 began in Mumbai with the Indian Classics and the first major of the year was the Ladies Derby or as it's better known, the Indian Oaks. Moonlight Romance had been the darling of the previous summer and in what proved to be her year, she not only avenged a Guinea's defeat at the end of 2010 but went on to win the McDowell Signature Indian Derby and the Indian Turf Invitation Cup. All three Grade 1 races were over a mile and a half and no matter what would transpire over the rest of the year, she was at the top of the 2011 Classic Crop having won two of the five Indian Classics. In third day, Matthew P2. Moonlight Romance making a forward move on the outside, and there's Ocean and beyond. But Sunlight on the inside, Elling is the leader. From uh, my Moonlight Romance on the outside, Matthew P2 in the center. Ocean and beyond is in fourth spot, but it is Matthew P2 in the center. Moonlight Romance moving up fast on the outside. In third, there is Ocean and beyond, but it is Moonlight Romance on the outside. From Ocean and beyond in the center. On the way, it's Matthew P2. It's Moonlight Romance. Going to hold on from uh, uh, Ocean and Beyond, Moonlight Romance to the winner from Ocean and Beyond, the Wizards come at your picture. On the turn and into the street, Sunlight on the inside heading comes in on first, a length and a quarter in front of a Frost Ferry in second place. Moonlight Romance is making a smooth forward move in third, with Chiachin has been pushed on the outside, others are far away. But it is Moonlight Romance on the outside, goes sailing out in front, is about three lengths ahead. Frost Ferry in the center. Chiachin is under pressure on the outside, on the way there, sunlight in the hands of Richard Hughes, there, moonlight romance, being given a reminder, is going further and further away from sunlight and Chiachin. Moonlight romance to the winner from... Monarch in second place, Ocean and Beyond in third, spot up on the outside, Moonlight Romance, Sun Kingdom on the inside, a link, Ziska is making a forward move in the centre, Machu Picchu on the outside, Balmoral Castle on the inside as they turn for home. Round the town and into the street, Moonstar on the inside, a link comes in on first, from Vijay Monarch in second place, Ocean and Beyond is improving in the centre, Moonlight Romance is making a smooth forward move on the outside, Ziska also joining these two, but it is Moonlight Romance on the outside, on the rails there is Ocean and Beyond, Ziska is coming up on on the outside. It's Moonlight Romance from Ziska. 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 Moonlight Romance holds on from Ziska. Ocean and Beyond, Machu Picchu, Vijay Monarch, after the Balmoral Castle, Sun Kingdom. Last of all, there is Moonstar. Amongst the juvenile crop, the winter clearly belonged to Picasso. The son of Black Ash won both the Breeders Produce Stakes and the Punawala Breeders Multimillion in Mumbai. He stamped himself as a serious classic contender for the next year. In this noblesse and nearness of you, but in the run up to the line in the last 100 meters, and it's Picasso going to lift the Kunikal Stud Breeders Produce Stakes in great style by about three and a half to four from Maddox. Snowblaze is third in this nearness of you, Art Chieftain. And into the straight they enter. They have a little over 400 to go in this Poonawala Breeders Multi Million Grade 1. And it's Martinique still holding the fort by about a length and a half from Aiden coming up on the outside. Mountain Glory up on the wide outside, then there is Haunting Fantasy, Picasso trying to come through in the center, up on the outside is Amoretto, then there is Amadeus on the inside rails trying to come through, on the wide outside there is Pronto Pronto and Sledgehammer, but inside the last 200, Aiden has gone over Picasso, and look at Amadeus on the inside rails, he is gathering momentum, and it could be a close one with Picasso on the outside, on the rails it Aiden, and Picasso lifts the Poonawala beaters multi-million. Meanwhile, as the winter gave way to the summer, a young juvenile who had been coming along quietly till now began to blossom and battled home in both the Colts Trial Stakes and the Kingfisher Bangalore Derby. He would go on to mature even further and win the first classic at the end of the year, the Casino Royale Indian 2000 Guineas. And as they begin to wheel round the corner, it's a stop, he's still calling the shots, a length and three quarters in front of speed, six in second position. Knight and is in third, then comes Cardinal beginning to warm up on the outside. Very close behind them is Pronto Pronto and Picasso with about 400 meters more to run. 
Speed 6 grabs the initiative. A length in front of Knighton. Cardinal making good progress on the outside. So too is Picasso on the further wide out. And the Proctor Pronto in the middle. They're all together there with about 200 meters more to run. Cardinal from Picasso. It's Cardinal Picasso and Pronto Pronto appearing towards the inside. Rail. Speed 6 is gone. 100 to go. It's Pronto Pronto from Picasso. Pronto Pronto and Picasso. Pronto Pronto wins it from Picasso. Cardinal is third. Then comes Speed 6 as they race past the finish. And as the summer burnt itself out and the monsoon brought the rains, the action shifted to Pune for the Synth Ledger and the Nanoli Star Pune Derby. Without Moonlight Romance and the picture having retired, the fifth Indian classic fell to Machu Picchu. Negotiate the home turn for the final running of the Grade 1 McDowell Signature Indian Saint Ledger. Machu Picchu comes in on first, hotly chased by Ocean and Beyond coming up on the outside. Frost Ferry is struggling to keep up on the outside, is Odin to one and Berlusconi has fallen back. With about 200 meters more to run, Machu Picchu is now being strongly challenged on the outside by Ocean and Beyond and these two have pulled away from Odin to one. It's Machu Picchu and Ocean and Beyond going stride for stride. Machu Picchu has a slight upper hand over Ocean and Beyond. Machu Picchu stretching on well. Machu Picchu wins the set ledger in great style from Ocean and Beyond and there's Odin one. Over in Imtia State Stable while Pronto Pronto took a break break for the winter, the emergence of a Rosine filly from Vinayak stable made the classic picture extremely interesting. Hills and Stars from Vinayak's yard ran away with the 10 furlong Nanoli Star Pune Derby and established herself as the leading three-year-old filly. Lake Michigan now takes over the running. Three quarters of length in front of Hills and Stars quickly moving into second. A length and a half further back there's Maddox being pushed at the stage. Cardinal also making his presence felt on the outside. With about 350 meters more to run and it's Hills and Stars who's stolen a march. He's gone away about two and a half, three lengths in front of Cardinal trying hard to chase. Then comes Marauder with about 200 meters more to run and Suraj Naredo is driving Hills and Stars for an emphatic victory here. It's a derby double for the other ones with Ocean and Beyond last time. Hills and Stars this time. Hills and Stars is the new champion winning by about three lengths in front of Cardinal finishing up second. Long way back was Marauder. Come the winter and it was time for the first two classics before the year came to a close. While Pronto Pronto returned victorious in the Indian 2000 guineas, the unbeaten alma mater from Basie Shroff's yard stunned the field in the 1000 guineas, bringing to close a remarkable 2011. What the inside is is haunting fantasy, romantic, then there's hills and stars and alma mater as they straighten up for home. With about 400 meters more to run, Class Apart is all alone in front, about three and a half lengths in front of Rebecca getting a bit closer. Then comes Black Magic Woman towards the inside base, looking for room. There is the Botswana, then there's Victoria on the outside base, smashing Pretty Baron on the outside. Then there is the Hills and Stars coming up into the picture now, and Alma Meta devouring round on the outside with about 200 meters more to run. And it's Alma Meta traveling well. He's about half a length in front of Black Magic Woman and Botswana. Alma Meta and Botswana, but it's Alma Meta who wins it from Botswana. Then comes Hills and Stars as they race past the finish. Well, and that was all the action from India. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we'll catch up with the international year that was, including our champion, Frankel. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. Now, 2011 was a very special year over in Singapore. You had great champions like Rocket Man, who finally got a monkey off his back. But over in the West, you had a great horse called Frankel. Internationally, the 2011 year was a special one to say the least. The emergence of a superstar in England called Frankel and the unlikely hero of the Melbourne Cup, Dunedin, started and ended the year on a remarkable note. While the former came from the gold lace palaces of the horse racing industry, the latter was a true slumdog millionaire story. The former a son of the great Galileo, the latter a son of a stallion that no one had even cared to hear of. The English 2000 guineas at Newmarket was Frankel's second start of the year. Many have stated after the race that they have never witnessed anything as electrifying as this. So win it well. Jabari got in second, Native Khan in third, Sim Shady is just in fourth and Fury in fifth. The way Frankel has blown apart a Group 1 field. Prior to this, the World Cup night in Dubai provided another superstar with long-awaited cheer. Rocketman from Singapore had done everything in his career but win a Group 1 race and on a sultry evening exercised his demons once and for all in the Golden Shaheen even as Japan found a much needed cheer in the World Cup itself finishing 1-2 in the wake of its tsunami disaster. Followed by Sunny King, Dynamic Blitz, Green Birdie and Escape Root as they're well in the straight. 
Euro ears said, catch me if you can. Rocket Man's trying to do that. He's coming after Euro ears. Green Birdie is burning down the centre of the track. Rocket Man after the American. Rocket Man takes the lead, 100 metres to go from Euro ears. Then Green Birdie and Sonny King, but Rocket Man in front, and he's done it this year. Rocket Man wins the Golden Shaheen. Followed by twice over, Poet's Voice pushing through in the middle. Then Richard's kid, Mooser, Golden Sword, Buana Vista and Flydown had dropped out to the tail of the field as they flattened past the 400. Victoire Pisa joined Transend. Kate Blanco, three out. Gitano Hernando, four out. Gio Ponti coming down the middle. Then Monterosso looking for a split. Victoire Pisa in front of Transend. Kate Blanco. Gio Potti on the outside, Victoire Pisa in front, they're drawing to the judge, Victoire Pisa in front and wins for Japan! A month and a half later, the action moved to Singapore and the Chris Flyer sprint showed that Rocket Man was indeed at the peak of his bars and South Africa found a 1-2 finish in the SIA Cup. Champion Rocket Man goes up to lay it to him now. They were followed by Happy to buy running a big race. Sacred Kingdom is slapped at the boards. Back and behind them, then his perfect pins. 300 meters to go. Rocket Man given full ball by Felix Kutz. He is out by two. Over Sacred Kingdom, powerful roller is down the outside. Rocket Man, he races away from Sacred Kingdom. The champion international sprinter of the world is racing away. Rocket Man gets his just desserts. Cheer Singapore, the cringy roar goes up. Rocket Man by five, a clear fast pass second. The first to go up and challenge him, followed by Waikato as they turn. Chinchon's been wide throughout. Then Royal Bench coming in of it. River Jets have between horses. Prescott's area and right down the outside with Wigmore Hall. But Gitano Hernando race the lead over California memory. River Jets have back between horses. Chinchon, Irian down the outside and Waikato over on the inside. The leader Gitano Hernando. Waikato running the race of its life coming quickly with River Jets. Here's Irian down the outside but Gitano Hernando in front and takes the cup. Gitano Hernando. Back in the UK, the Epsom Derby is the second leg of the English Triple Crown, and with Frankel missing from the lineup, there was not going to be a Triple Crown winner in 2011. The hero of this grueling mile and a half classic, in fact, came from across the channel. Six Paul Moir from a long way back. Treasure Beach got to the front in the derby. Memphis, Tennessee and Carlton House in hot pursuit. Out in front, Treasure Beach from in second, Carlton House. Paul Moir coming strongly down the outside. Treasure Beach just in front. Paul Moir coming on the outer. And behind them is Master. Royal Ascot brings colour and class to a week of horse racing. Frankel was back in action at the St. James Palace Stakes and rewilding war down, so you think, in the Prince of Wales Stakes. He's raced up on the outside now to grab the lead as they go to the three. It's Frankel who takes it up now. He's gone two and a half, three lengths in front as they round the turn. Further back then is uh, Dubawi Gold in third, a gap to acceleration. Further back in the field then is uh, the Grand Prix boss, but two furlongs left to go. It's Frankel. Frankel by five lengths. Acceleration coming out of the pack. Followed then by Dabawi Golden for the back to Braz and Dream ahead down the outside. He's starting to shorten stride but he's still in front. It's Frankel by three. Down the outside, Zoffany finishing fast. Followed by acceleration. It's Frankel now. He's starting to paddle. He's going up and down in the one spot. But he's held on. Frankel has won it. Frankel won the St. James's Palace. He's still unbeaten. Racing in the Prince of Wales. And so you think in the centre got away very smart. Side, so you think has raced to the lead. They straighten up for home. The Aussie superstar goes three lengths in front. Twice over out after him. Planteur out wider on the track. Rewilding is running on. Moore's reached for the whip. He gives him a slap. He's gone three in front now. It's so you think in front. Rewilding is now starting to motor home down the outside. A furlong left to go. So you think a length and a half in front. All the time Rewilding is where Frankel's year would end on the British Champions Day in QE2 at Ascot and the unbeaten champion proved he had not missed a step on what was a magnificent afternoon of racing. Uh, behind these, the blue jacket of Poet's Voice, 
And then we have the keen side glance, and Immortal Verse is held up at the rear of the field. So Bullet Train out in front, still with a clear advantage. And now Frankel, and the group at the centre, is sent off pursuit of the pacemaker. Dick Turpin and Dubawi Gold deciding where they're going to go. Dick Turpin heading towards the stand side. Uh, X Celebration with Poet's Voice, Immortal Verse, and side glance. Bullet Train, the pacemaker, still has a lead of about five to six lengths. Frankel is towing up the main group with X Celebration, Poet's Voice, Immortal Verse, White and Green beginning to steal closer two furlongs out the moment of truth as frankel moves alongside bullet train immortal verse in danger of running up the back of the pacemaker frankel is asked to stretch has found two to three lengths for x celebration and immortal verse frankel being held together x celebration two lengths down frankel now in full cry x celebration and immortal verse two quality horses are made to look mere mortals as frankel Remains unbeaten and wins the QE2. Acceleration was second, tight third. Immortal verse from Dubawi Gold. As now Nathaniel strikes for home. Two furlongs out. Nathaniel, the move covered by So You Think has got to within half a length. Cirrus does Eagle Snow Fairy uh, towards the outside twice over, can't go on midday, tries to stay on, so you think, and Cirrus does Eagle, then Snow Fairy looking for an out underneath the pair, will we switch to the outside, midday and green destiny, Cirrus does Eagle on the outside of so you think, Snow Fairy is back in third, Cirrus does Eagle on the near side for Christophe Sumion, Cirrus does Eagle, the champion stakes goes to France, Cirrus does Eagle the winner. Over in Paris two weeks earlier, the city awoke to the greatest weekend of horse racing in the world and the Prix de l'Arc de Triomphe provided a result that would make most racing pundits head back to the drawing board. Place Daydream behind this. Serafina still towards the back of the field. They're into the home straight now. And it's Sir Nicholas Abbey leading to Charetta in second position. Hirona de Moore behind this. Daydream is next. Miandra trying to pick up as they head down to the closing stages now. And here up on the outside is Daydream to throw down the challenge. And in the orange jacket, Daydream has quickened up in tremendous style to go through now. Charetta in second to Nicholas Abbey. Snow Fair are coming from the back of the field. Andre Stark is celebrating already. Dane Dream has won by many lengths. A fantastic performance. Dane Dream, the uh, German filly, has come through. The Melbourne Cup is the race that stops a nation and in Australia as the year came to a close, the two mile race belonged to an unlikely hero in Dunedin from France who was pushed across the post by the Frenchman Christophe Lemaire. Inside end precedence, the challenges are coming. Diawatt around the outside puts in his run. Bowden's off the track, Menegar comes on. Then came at first sight looking for the way clear. Duna then trying to away, find a way through. Lucas Cranach on the scene with a big run. With 300 metres to go now, precedence hit the lead, but Menegar challenges strongly. Lucas Cranach and getting up on the inside, lost in the moment with the challenge. Here's Red Cano starting to flash home on the outside now. Lucas Cranach hit the lead. Red Cano coming down the outside. Dunedin is coming through in the middle. Dunedin, Red Cano and Lucas Cranach. And truly a great horse. We'll take a short break on that note. We'll come back and take a look at 2012. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the Fly King Fisher winning post. Now the new year always brings plenty of hope with it. Also come some New Year's resolutions. I wish all the viewers a very happy new year. My new resolution is to win many more races as I always won as a jockey and to keep up the same. Um, my new year's re resolution would be to maybe win a classic or a couple of classics in India. Wish you a very happy 2012. Work hard, come to the races and spend wisely. New Year's resolution, try and get another classic in the bag, hopefully. It's a lucky place for me and hopefully I can win another one. I do wish him a very happy Christmas and I hope you keep back in winners. Well, I hope to do better than last year and I wish everybody and uh, all the public that come racing a happy new year. I wish all the viewers a very, very happy new year and I hope they all come racing more often and enjoy the sport for what it is. I wish all the viewers a happy new year, hope you all do well and just stay happy. And whatever you do. New Year resolution is ride my best, go with the flow as usual, and stay more happier than last year. New Year resolution should be have a bumper season 
coming year and all the best to all our race course. Good luck. Well, last year was excellent. I mean, uh, won my first championship in the summer. Great feeling. So, uh, try to uh, just try and do it again and stay on top. That's the new resolution for the next year. My dream is that I'm not yet won a Derby, Bombay Derby. Let's hope for this year if I can do it. Well, then we wish everyone the very best for 2012. Looking back one last time, let's remember some of the very special people who left us in 2011. <laughs> Nana Raghunath and myself, we practically started our career together. Uh, I started in 1981, December in uh, Chennai, and Nana started in uh, 1982, May in Uti. Uh, and uh, he was in my next table, and uh, we became friends from then on for the next 30 years till 2011. We have been always been friends. He was part of a uh, our family, when he came to Bangalore, he stayed with us. And uh, after I met, married Sharmila, both of us uh, uh, were very, very fond of him. It's a tra very tragic thing that he died yesterday. And even yesterday morning, he went to track. He told me at 10 o'clock that uh, he, he went there to see in the spotlight canter. And he was the one who persuaded me to bring in the spotlight to Calcutta saying that he's going to be there. So I would miss him terribly. Well, I met Nana through my husband and we became closer and closer through the years. We not only shared uh, racing, we were great film addicts. We used to go and watch every movie together. I mean, it was it's unbelievable to hear what happened to him. I even spoke to him at 1.15 yesterday, just before he had a runner in Calcutta. And he said, you know, take a chance on my horse, not knowing in another 45 minutes he's not going to be there. Well, wherever he is, I hope he's okay. Close and dear friend Nana Raghunath's untimely demise in Calcutta. He was single, so he wanted to enjoy that bachelorhood always. But very easy going, very easy going. You can ask him, Nana, come on, let's go anywhere. He was always ready. So he never refused anyone for kind of a favor or a kind of a in a in a in a friendship uh, something you ask for he never refused always willing to take everything in his strides even you say something to him he would accept he will not uh, argue with you that kind of a person i can't even express my grief because he was my childhood friend from kindergarten till college and then we were trainers together we became, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we had decided as children both to become horse trainers. And he was one of my dearest and closest friends. He was a fantastic human being. Well, I'll be missing him in all ways, as a brother, as a friend, as a colleague, in all ways. It'll, be, it'll take me a long time to forget uh, his, you know, this thing. And I have no words, actually, now. I can't talk.
that note, that's all we have on this episode. I'll see you in 2012. Till then, I'm Mohit Lalwani signing off. Thank you for joining me. And as always, may the horse be with you. Winning Post is powered by the Serum Institute of India and Hirko Industries.